Hi, my name is Soile, and you're listening to Heart to Heartland, a fan podcast from a fan perspective. Welcome back to the Heartland Podcast Universe. Uh, we're here to discuss episode two of season 17. And, and before I get into your comments, I just wanted to say that I love how long your comments have gotten, how much thought you put into them. Um, so I really appreciate them. And so let's just get started. And the first comment comes from 1979 Walnut. I see episode two as the continuation of the three main storylines that were introduced in episode one. Lou with her midlife issues, which we see as part of flashbacks in the season trailer. Lou losing the mayoral race is just one more step added to what is coming down the line for Lou to deal with. The other two main storylines I believe are connected with the Heartland Beef competition and Grazing Land and Amy opening herself to dating and from filming shots, trailer shots and episode 3 preview, Nathan Price is the connection. On the date night with Edwin and Amy who brought Lindy along, what caught my attention was the question Lindy asked why Edwin doesn't show jump anymore and his answer brought up the question does he even ride at all anymore like trail rides? The writers have never shown him riding. I have a suspicion this ride issue will come up again which will lead Amy to move on from Edwin. I have seen a lot of comments there is no chemistry between Amy and Edwin and I think the writers wanted it that way because they are going to have Amy move on from Edwin. Lastly, is Katie's crush on Logan over with her asking him how things are going with Miley? In season 16, episode 14, Katie did find out from social media Logan and Miley did go on a road trip together, which may have ended her crush then. Then Sprock said, These first two episodes for me were very mundane and lacked a lot of luster, so to speak. From my recollection, didn't Heather write most of the first episode of the season? I bring that up because she had flair of some type of dramatics at the beginning of each season. I haven't seen that at all yet, and from my perspective, her writing is missed. Amy and Edwin, no please. I totally agree with what the others have said about Peter not being there and no mention of Lisa or Tim's wife for two episodes. I know we saw Jack in the barn talking to Lisa, but still. Hope to at least get some trauma in at least this next episode. Then Slish Tripper said, not everything in life is great, but there is always something good. And I would say this episode is like that. Some good moments, but not great overall. I will admit I got used to the slower pace of the 15th episode season, and now this season seems rushed. I know the Amy Edwin situation needed to be resolved, but this seemed like the least creative way to do it, and also too quick. Amy misreading the signals and inviting Lindy along, etc. Though I guess after 17 years, old habits are hard to break. Maybe this is a sign that Amy and Lindy just need a friend. Likewise, I don't understand how or why the election lasted only two episodes. From the moment we found out Rick was running against Lou, I knew Rick would be mayor. I wonder what it means for Rick's character and also for the rest of the season for Lou. Given that I saw the result coming, making Remy's death the immediate cause was a bit of a reach to me. I am glad that they paid honor to Remy in the show. It was good for fans who had been following the story and probably also good for the cast as well, particularly for Amber. It was good to see Katie working with Logan and also hear about the story she is writing. Hopefully she will shine through her writing more than she was allowed to shine through her music last season. I also always enjoy seeing how the Spencer twins step into their role and become more prominent. 
Lindy and Jack making chicken for Remy was just precious. These simple things are what life is about and what make the show have energy. The election, the prize beef drama, and the rehoming of Buddy make it hard for me to guess what is happening here, but I love the Heartland family and will enjoy the ride. Then Sharon said, I enjoyed the episode. Not going to lie, but I shed a tear when Remy died and at the memorial, which I feel it was more about Amber's dog. Mayor election. I don't think that Alu's heart was really in it. She said the right things, but only after Tim pushed her. Tim said himself that he goes over the top. He never realizes until both Lou and Amy have pushed back. Logan helping the horse, but didn't give any credit to Katie. Amy and Katie having a conversation. Well, a long sentence. It's a start. Sorry, but the Amy and Edwin storyline seems forced. The water fight, she did this with Ty. The writers could have been a little more original. I like their banter, but if she liked him in a romantic way, she would have felt that way before Edwin pointed out his feelings. I really like the idea of Amy getting back into the world, but in my opinion, she and Edwin are friends. I don't think they are a good fit. I did like how both sisters leaned on each other for advice. Uh, where was Peter? He only ever made an effort when they were dating or when he was jealous of Lou dating Mitch. He rarely made an effort during their marriage. In fact, he took Lou for granted. Jack finally got his head out of the sand and realized that Price is a threat. I didn't realize that Sam sold the land. Would have thought Jack and Tim talked to him and explained what Price is trying to do. Guess anyone can be bought these days. Looking forward to episode 3. Then Dipset. First time around, the entire family was at Maggie's awaiting the election results. This time, just three. Maybe if there had been one or two more there with Tim to visualize victory, those 12 votes would have gone to Lou. Actually, however, I will take quality over quantity, and there were a lot of tender moments in this episode for a sentimental person like me to enjoy. Tim, Katie, and Lindy preparing Lou a surprise election day breakfast, and Jack's hug and kiss encouraging Lou to sit and eat was one of my favorite scenes. When Lou lost, Jack was there to give her hand a comforting squeeze, and I love that both Amy and Lou turned to each other for advice that day. The story of Remy's passing was very sad, but also a moving tribute. I like the interaction between Lindy and Gigi cooking chicken to entice Remy to eat. Amy's scene in the field comforting dying Remy was heart-wrenching, and the memorial picnic was, let's just say, very heartlandish. I really started to like Edwin in this episode. Until now, I have been lukewarm towards him, but he seems to be funny, an animal lover, and a family-oriented. I agree with Lou. Amy should give him a chance. Shop around, Amy. Shop around. Then dip at it. I would also like to add that I thought Lou referring to her mayoral loss as meaningless was a ridiculous overstatement. I think that something like, after Amy told me about Remy, losing the election did not seem as important. Would have gotten the point across in a more believable way. Sometimes I feel that the Heartland writers think that I am dense and are banging me over my head to get their point across. Then HL Horses said, I like this episode. Again, nothing crazy, but it was decent. I love seeing Jack ride Buddy because I felt he's kind of disappeared since Plu came into the picture. I was reminded again how weird it was that the writers wanted Jack to have another horse for really no reason. And now they are actually riding Buddy off, which is interesting. At least Jack will only have one horse now, which is all he needs, but I guess I still don't see the point of replacing Buddy unless it has to do with the real life horse. I like the election story too. Of course, Tim always takes the rivalry and the competition a little too far, but I do love seeing how much he wants to be involved and support Lou. I had a feeling Lou was going to lose based on the set clues and the synopsis for future episodes, but I am interested what she will want to get into next. I hope we get to continue to see Rick, but I'm not getting my hopes up. Me and my continuity brain did notice the election is at a different time of the year than in season 13. It was during the fall then, but that doesn't really matter in the long run. I always appreciate seeing Fairfield, just sad Lisa isn't there. 
I thought Amy and Edwin's scenes in this episode were much better than the ones they had in the past. They also confirm that they've been hanging out as friends between seasons, so it's nice Amy has a friend. I thought Edwin was sweet in bringing all the food for Amy in the beginning and also for being very understanding and offering to back off if she didn't feel the same. I also really liked when they talked through the awkward date scene. I thought Amy was going to be super weird about it and freak out, but she didn't and I thought the conversation was nice. Neither got defensive or hurt. I also liked that Amy talked to Lou about it. The splashing scene was cute too. I was very surprised at the shirtless scene, but all I could think about was all the makeup they put on Rene to cover up all his tattoos because God forbid he has tattoos. I found it funny how Amy made fun of herself that she can't read people things. I can definitely buy into them more as a couple now than I did last season if they are going to last, which I don't believe they do based on set picks. Still not sold on them as a couple, but it's better than before. But it was nice to see Amy and Price dating head on. Amy finding Remy was so sad, mostly because Remy was Amber's dog. I guess I had just assumed it was going to happen with Lindy, but I'm glad Amy was the one who did. It was a nice touch, even if in the show she's not really Amy's dog. I did get choked up a bit, thinking it being Amber and Remy. The little picnic they had for her was cute too. I just wish they would have mentioned Georgie, since Remy is technically her dog. I am glad Remy got a send-off though, rather than just ignoring that she was gone or just having another dog play her. Also, we got a Lisa mention. Yay! Nice to see Logan trying to deal with a Klein horse, but that's not really a storyline I'm interested in. I did like his scenes with Katie. Shows they are good friends. As long as that's all they will be. Haha. -ha. As always, looking forward to next week. Then Lisa said, another mid-episode on the whole. The election was rushed over the two episodes, and where the hell was Peter? There in the last episode, but not there for Lou in this one. It makes zero sense. This is a big change for Lou and the whole story was put into a couple of scenes. The story should have been over more episodes, in my opinion. The Remy scenes I actually liked. I did feel like Amber came through Amy on those feelings of Remy's loss. However, last season Copper died and Mallory came back. Remy was Georgie's dog and absolutely zero mention of even telling her, etc. Make it make sense. The Amy and Edwin scenes were just so grinchy. More chemistry in a morgue than between them two. Back to the same old Amy can read animals but not people, etc. Thai fans will be getting wet. <laughs> Thai fans will be getting wet knickers that Lindy actually mentioned him, and I can also see those same fans moaning that the water fight was like Thai and Amy in season three, episode one, and how dare they do that to Ty? Blah blah blah. Fairfield, but no Lisa, no Jessica yet either. Not the worst episode, but still quite mid, and I'm not thrilled by the season so far. Then Stephanie said, I enjoyed the episode. It wasn't exactly full of drama or anything too crazy, but it was not bad. There were moments I enjoyed and some I found a tad gringy. I really enjoyed seeing Jack riding Buddy again. He sort of felt like the writers forgot about him and he was in the well with all the characters and horses that are never mentioned anymore. I was sad to see him leave, as others have pointed out, it seems very random. Jack letting Buddy leave and him just riding Blue from now on, especially after that whole storyline with Jack warming up to Buddy after Paint dying. I did like the phone call to Lisa at the end. I'm glad they actually mentioned her. I just wish she was around. The election story was overall good. I would like seeing that Rick and Lou are still friends and are there to support each other. I did think originally the storyline was going to play out for a few episodes and not be over so soon, but I guess with the 10 episode limit, they have to rush some things. I enjoyed seeing Tim helping Lou and supporting her even if he can be a bit over the top, but his intentions are always good. I did however find it odd that Peter wasn't there and no mention as to where his whereabouts are. You would think he'd be there to support Lou during this election like season 13 and 14. Please let me know which season. That would be season 13. 
Now, I don't really know what to make of Amy and Edwin's storyline. On one hand, I love that she actually seems to have a friend, and Lindy also has a friend. But on the other, I just can't see them being anything but friends. There's just no chemistry there. They give off massive friendship vibes only. Nothing romantic at all. And the whole Amy seeing him shirtless made me grinch. The water fight was kind of fun to watch. I did appreciate the fact that they were able to talk about the misunderstanding about the date, and there were no hard feelings there. I also liked that Edwin stated a few times that if Amy wasn't interested, to simply tell him and he would back off. Again, no Jessica, I really hope we see her soon. And then Smoking Holster said, I actually read the other reviews and pretty much feel the same the others do about a lot of this episode. It was fine, nothing special, but nothing to write home about. To me, the highlight of the show was the tribute to Remy in its different forms. Lindy's interaction, Amy's heartfelt scene, and the small memorial tribute of the family. I always loved Remy's presence on the show and the few times she stole the camera, like the storm scene with Luke and shots of Lindy chasing her through the house in the background. Personally, I hope they get Lindy a dog. It was weird that the one mention of Georgie was for something else and not the fact that technically Remy was her dog. I find the pairing of Edwin and Amy awkward at best, with either no chemistry or one that's really strained. The shirtless scene was cringy and contrived, as was the water scene and the fact that she's still driving Ty's truck around. Seriously? What's that all about? Okay, back to Edwin and Amy. They date, and then what? If it doesn't work out, will that work with Lindy still having a best friend if their parents start acting a little strange or stop begging of spending a lot of time with each other? It's good to know, though, that Amy can now diagnose a horse in five minutes or less because stretching it out just wastes film. Glad Jack decided to get rid of Buddy to make this deal happen because it gives me hope that there's a dose of reality in the magic barn. I'm willing to bet they still have Pal so Shane and him can reunite next episode or whenever. 50-50, he'll be stalled in the barn. Ha! Where was Peter? Probably at work somewhere. Is that still in Vancouver? Lou lost, not the worst thing in the world, apparently. Lisa and Jed still missing in action, but hey, at least we know Lisa's still alive. Katie and Logan, I thought that was over. It was okay, I guess, and I'm glad they went on the trail ride and cured the horse of its flak fears. Chess goes to show that once again, a trail ride cures all. If they could bottle trail rides, Amy would be out of a job. Thanks for all the comments. I pretty much agree with most of them. Um, so I'm not going to repeat what you guys have just said, but I will add a few uh, touches to what's been said. Um, first of all, the Amy and Edwin thing, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious it's not going to last. Like you said, there's no chemistry there, and I feel like it's kind of a strange place to start out. Edwin having feelings for Amy, but Amy kind of be like, oh, oh, wasn't aware that that was happening, because it then changes the dynamic between them and maybe kind of forces Amy to feel like she needs to catch up. And if she doesn't feel that way, it can kind of ruin the relationship, the friendship and all that. But I do think that while Edwin is not the one for Amy, he was a good stepping stone in a way because he's very blunt and he was very open to communication. Like there wasn't any, like, well, there were awkward moments, but then he was like, okay, let's tackle this because I'm not going to live in this awkward energy. Uh, and I don't think you should either. So let's just talk it out, which I think is what Amy needs, especially now that she sort of has to shake off those dating jitters or whatever the saying is. So I think in a way, it was a good thing that they sort of got this first awkward dating phase out of the way with Edwin. One of the things I was really surprised about was how quickly Amy was sort of able to diagnose Brady. It wasn't like, I don't know if Brady should jump, but it was more like Brady shouldn't jump anymore. 
but I'm glad it worked out with Prady. Um, and it was interesting to see how they worked it through with Jack being involved and all that. It's always nice to see a new aspect to the horse world. As for Lou, I really liked how Amy and Lou were there for each other in this episode. I've always loved those sisterly scenes. I feel like they've been sort of in and out with them for a few years now, but I feel like with this season, it seems like that connection is going to be very prominent and I am here for it. Last week I was like, um, I might be team Peter after all, but after this episode, I'm back to square one. Like not even an explanation like, oh, he had to be at Vancouver. Is that where he is? I don't know. We were left in this sort of limbo last season with him and his job situation. Um, also would have been kind of nice if maybe they have mentioned like, oh, Jess is uh, in New York, but she's like watching the election or Lisa's there through the phone call or something like that. But you know, it is what it is. While it was obvious that Lou was going to lose and there was really not that much surprise there, I think it was good to see Lou sort of going through the feelings of, do I want this? What if I lose? Like, how am I going to feel? Maybe I want to lose. Maybe I want to kind of get ahead of myself and think like, oh, maybe I don't want a, another term or all those things, because I think they're very important for her character to go through this season, especially with only 10 episodes. And we rarely get to see Lou have this sort of big storyline where she is allowed to have a lot of feelings within one episode. So I really enjoyed that. Obviously, the scenes with Rick were very awkward. It made me feel awkward, too. And while this whole election thing happened really fast, I'm kind of also okay with it because I don't want to see any more of those awkward scenes between Lou and Rick because it's just, I don't know, it's just very hard to watch because I feel like Rick is very apologetic. And while I understand that, it's also kind of like, come on, man, like be proud of yourself and what you're about to do. So it's kind of a um, complicated thing. And um, I, I feel like Lou handled it all really well. And I'm just glad that there was not too petty drama there. And she was able to show that she's a good loser or can be a good loser sometimes, you know, with her enthusiasm to win always or just kind of try and win uh i think this is a big step for lou the whole logan storyline was kind of low-key in this episode i don't know if it served that much of a purpose uh it did help tie the remy storyline for the rest of the storylines but i was maybe looking forward to something more it felt kind of anticlimactic but i did like when the episode started and we had he scenes with sunshine it did give me this fresh perspective to the whole horse whispering world because we see that with amy a lot of the times and while it's always really fascinating it sort of gets repetitive because we get to see it every time with Amy mostly. So having someone new come into the mix, it was sort of like, oh yeah, like this is why I fell in love with that aspect of the show. Like, of course, it's nowhere near what Amy has offered through the years, but it was still kind of this moment of freshness uh, after 17 seasons. So I did like that little moment that I have with those scenes. When the story continued, it reminded me of, I think Michelle said this, like, what if Amy couldn't work with the horse once and someone else would have to step in. So in that way, Logan sort of stepped in, even though this was planned all along. And I did like that it showed that it's not always so easy, but then it sort of ended up being kind of easy, you know, the trail ride to fix it all. I really expected there to be some sort of new angle or something like only Logan could come up with uh, to sort of show that he has that special quality to him, which is what Amy has. But at the same time, I don't know, 
he was able to think on his feet and all that, but I just felt like it was very underwhelming um, as a whole. The one thing I liked about it, though, was that when he didn't succeed at first and Logan expressed like, oh my gosh, like, I can't do this, Amy was there to encourage him and say like, you know, not everything happens as easily as you would want to, but you can't give up. You have to keep going and that's exactly what he did. So I did like that mentorship moment with Amy and Logan. I was also really surprised that they brought in Buddy because like many of you said, they sort of forgot about him and it was never really explained why. Like Jack just had this obsession over Blue and Buddy was just like, what about me? And then he was just forgotten. So I'm glad that they gave him a new purpose, even though it was kind of bittersweet to see him go because of the history Jack shares with the horse and the work Georgie put in to connect these two. So it was kind of like, oh, that was a very quick way to move on. But I'm glad that they had that small scene with Jack, Tim, and Buddy there, because at least it was something and not like, bye bye, Buddy, and we see a trailer going off, and that's just it. I also really like that little mention of Tim saying something like, Are you bragging to your girl? and Jack kind of being like, Maybe. Even though it didn't explain where Lisa was, at least it was acknowledged that she's away and they're still in contact with Jack. Then we had the sad passing of Remy. While it was sad, um, I think it was needed considering what has happened in the real life. And I think they did it beautifully. I especially really like, I don't, I don't know if I can say really liked, but hopefully you know what I mean. Like the way they set up the whole scene where Amy finds Remy because it was not only the music but it was also the scenery like the heavy dark clouds and the performances of course um, I really feel like Amber might have come through uh, in that moment and then later on when they had the memorial for Remy and she sort of gets choked up but like some of you said uh, I wish they would have said something like oh I need to call Georgie and tell about Remy or just something because it doesn't require much but it makes a whole difference because Remy was Georgie's dog and, and she really uh, fought for them to keep her and so yeah I wish they would have added that but other than that I think they did beautiful job and seeing the family sit um, at the picnic and talk about Remy and the memories and all that. It did make me think of that poem from season nine when Payne passes away and uh, Adam shares it with Georgie and then Georgie shares it with Jack. Again, tying to season nine where Buddy came in. So it's really interesting that all these little elements sort of came together at the same time. But like I was expecting the whole thing to be more traumatic, but maybe it's actually better that it wasn't because this way it's much more relatable for so many people. And I think a lot of people shed a tear while watching those scenes. I know it really moved me at least. Uh, also, one of the things I really noticed in this episode was that people were communicating and that's a rare thing <laughs> to see on Heartland. So I really appreciated that. Like we had Amy and Edwin and Lou and Amy and all that, but also one of the final scenes with Jack and Tim, like I know they can be a bit crumpy and all and their relationship is complex, but at least they can talk to each other and I really appreciate that especially given that they're a man of over the age of 60 or something like that with Jack the age is redacted but you know what I mean so I hope that that shows that people old dogs like Jack said can still learn new tricks even at their age um, then just final really minor thought was that I thought Fairfield looked really beautiful during this time of filming. And I also noticed uh, the, I don't know what they're called, but, but the transitional photos, like when you have um, footage of the foothills or like flowers or Maggie's or whatever, I really thought that 
they were a beautiful selection and it really helped bring across why Heartland is such a visually beautiful show. Then tomorrow we have the third episode of this season and it's called The Heart Wants. The synopsis says, Amy helps Caleb with his son's pony. Lou and Jessica start a new venture while Katie tries a risky new hobby. Logan takes a big step in his relationship with Miley, but then disaster strikes. So for anyone who has been missing Jessica, she's back next episode and it looks like there'll be a lot of new storylines introduced to the season. So I'm looking forward to talking about all of those with you next week. And until then, keep your noses clean and your paddle dry as they say. Bye.